KFC Rally Barbados 2024, the Caribbean's biggest annual motorsport spectacle. Over the past three days, the island's intricate tarmac stages have become a battleground with drivers facing the dual challenge of unforgiving terrain and unpredictable rain showers. <laughs> Rounds 4 and 5 of the Barbados Rally 2 Championship, proudly sponsored by CIBC Caribbean and Ace h &B Hardware and Lumber, unfolded with intense drama and high stakes competition across 21 special stages and 113 kilometers. The FIA R5 class delivered some of the most exhilarating and fiercely contested rallying we've ever witnessed. From spectacular performances to nail biting finishes, this is Rally Barbados at its finest. Strap in as we dive into the gripping action and unforgettable moments of BCIC Rally Barbados. As we dive into the combined highlights for days one and two, the battle between Stuart Maloney with co-driver Christian Yearwood and Jeffrey Panton alongside Mike Pennell Jr. truly stole the spotlight. Friday and Saturday saw an electrifying duel from the very start. Maloney took a slim lead in SS1, ahead of Panton by a mere second. His dominance was evident as he secured stage victories on six of the 12 stages we'd see on days one and two, showcasing remarkable skill and consistency. But Jeffrey Panton was relentless, consistently in the top three and keeping the pressure on Maloney. Maloney was truly on the ragged edge, pushing the limits and having big moments on three stages throughout the day, yet he continued to set the pace. In a stroke of luck, both Jeffrey and Stuart managed to complete stage nine on slick tires just before a torrential downpour struck, drenching the course and hampering the rest of the field. Their timing was impeccable, adding another layer of intensity to an already fierce competition. By the end of Saturday, Maloney held on to his lead by just 8.16 seconds, setting the stage for an epic showdown on Sunday. place was just as intense. Adam Malalu and Steve McNulty started strong, claiming first place in SS5, 11 and 12. Greg and Ori Hunt had an incredible journey to even make it to the start line. After rolling their Ford Fiesta Rally 2 at King of the Hill last weekend, the amazing team of Pro Auto Works worked tirelessly to rebuild the car. Kyle, clearly emotional, was unsure how they would progress after such a big accident. This was the comeback story of all comeback stories. 
guys did a fantastic job. Brett and the whole crew, thank you. <laughs> Amazing, the turnaround time in less than a week. Car is ready to run. Despite a slower start, Greg and Hunt found their rhythm and consistently finished within the top positions of each stage. But the drama peaked at SS9. Malalu's strategically fitting wet tyres gained a huge advantage, while Greg, unable to make the switch, lost heaps of time navigating the treacherous stage. Malalu managed to stay ahead, but Greg was relentless, shaving off seconds with each stage. The gap between them fluctuated, but by the end of the day, Malalu held a 20 second lead, setting the stage for more thrilling action on day three. The midfield was a battleground of its own, with fierce competition and tight margins. Logan Watson and Craig Yearwood had a consistent day placing well in each stage. Logan was a steady force, consistently finishing in the top 10 throughout Friday and Saturday. His incredible performance on stage eight saw him go fourth fastest overall, and his strategic choice to fit wet tires on the soaked SS9 jumped him up the leaderboard. And left three. 150. Right six on crest. Mark Maloney and Justin Maloney started strong, with Mark going fastest overall in SS1. However, they forced a setback in the second pass through Bushy Park on Friday night with a big off, losing 40 seconds. But Mark reset overnight and consistently placed in the top five during Saturday's stages, ending day two just 6.79 seconds behind Watson. Josh Reed and Mark Jordan experienced a roller coaster ride with a few ups and downs. Despite the challenges, Josh was in the top five fastest overall in four stages. However, the nature of rallying came back to haunt him on SS9, where he lost about 30 seconds to his rivals due to an inability to switch to wet tires. By the end of Saturday, the gaps were incredibly tight. Reed's gap to Maloney, a mere three seconds. Maloney's gap to Watson was just six seconds, and Watson's gap to Kyle Gregg ahead was 10 seconds, highlighting the intensely competitive nature of the FIA R5 class. Next would be the epic battle between old foes, Andrew Malalu, Roger Hill and Roger Duckworth. This clash saw thrilling moments and fierce competition. Andrew Malalu and Jeffrey Goddard were strong contenders, consistently placing well in the stages. Despite not feeling the most confident in the night stages on Friday at Bushy Park and Featherbed Lane, Malalu still posted top 10 times, even beating Roger Hill on two of those three stages. A strategic switch to wet tyres on SS9 helped Malalu leap ahead of Hill and improving road conditions saw him going faster. By the end of Saturday, the gap between Malalu and Hill was a mere 3.2 seconds. Enter Roger Hill and Graham Gittins. The consistent pair were up for the battle with Malalu and Duckworth. Despite also not feeling confident in the night stages, Hill finished just outside the top 10 after Friday night. Hill, however, would break into the top 10 on three of nine stages on Saturday, demonstrating his resilience and determination. Roger Duckworth had a tough start, losing significant time on SS2, which dropped him down the order, 
but he fought back, consistently finishing in the top 20 overall. His incredible performance on SS12, where he went third fastest overall, cut the gap to Hill. By the end of Saturday's stages, Duckworth was just 24 seconds behind Hill, adding another layer of excitement to this thrilling event. Enter George Sherman in his Ford Fiesta Rally 2, adding another dynamic element to the competition. For George, the name of the game was experimentation. He focused on trying different car setups to find something that worked for him, and his dedication paid off as he steadily improved his pace throughout the rally. Avoiding any major mistakes, George finished Saturday in a solid P10 in the FIA R5 class, demonstrating his skill and adaptability. Next up, we have Britain's Rob Swan with co-driver Tom Woodburn and Turks and Caicos' own Paul Horton with Britain's Matt Edwards. Their performances added yet another roller coaster story to Rally Barbados. Rob Swan showcased his pace early on, breaking into the top 10 on stage 1 and 3, although Brushy Park not his preferred stage. His speed was undeniable, however, as he went third fastest overall on SS2. This momentum carried into Saturday, where he went second fastest overall on the day's opening stage, putting him in the mix for podium contention. Swan maintained this blistering pace until the treacherous SS9. Caught out in the rain, he had an off and lost over five minutes to the field, essentially ending his hopes for a podium finish. Paul Horton, meanwhile, was in the mix with Andrew Malalu and Roger Hill, showing steady improvements in his stage times as the rally progressed. However, a stroke of bad luck on SS9. Caught out on slick tires, his car ran wide and collided with a concrete marker, breaking off a rear wheel. This would unfortunately end his rally prematurely, as the necessary spares needed to repair the Citroen C3 Rally 2 were not on hand. A harsh reminder of the challenges of rallying. Rounding out the FIA R5 class, we have Ireland's Barry McKenna in a never seen before Volkswagen Polo GTA R5. It was Barry's first time competing in this car, yet he had the Polo fully sideways multiple times on SS1, driving with flamboyance and pleasing the crowd from the start. Friday and Saturday saw Barry thrilling spectators with his daring style, but his rally took a dramatic turn on SS5. A crash rolled his polo onto its side, ending his rally as he went OTL. However, the damage wasn't critical, and his crew worked tirelessly to repair the car. Barry rejoined the rally from SS7, setting some notable top 10 stage times and continuing to provide maximum entertainment with his flamboyant driving. <laughs> As we kick off the Sunday stages in the north of the island, all eyes were on Adam Malalu. After finishing Saturday in P3 overall and first in the Barbados Rally 2 Championship, the stage was set for this young talent to achieve something extraordinary. Adam started Sunday with a bang, clocking top 10 times in stages 14 and 15. But on stage 16, the notorious dark hole, just one kilometer from the finish, the drama unfolded. Carrying too much speed into a left-hander, he drifted wide, collided with a curb, and broke both left-side wheels. This heartbreaking moment forced him out of the rally, just as a podium was within his grasp. An incredible performance from this young Barbadian, but a story of what might have been. Rob Swan and Todd Woodburn. Rob consistently posted top 10 times on Sunday, showing his skill and determination. Despite a 5 minute mishap on Saturday, Rob would finish 10th in the FIA R5 class and 6th in the Barbados Rally 2 Championship. Rob mentioned that it's always a challenge to finish this rally and he was happy to do so. His goal was to keep gelling with the car and trade times with the front runners, which he achieved. Top drive from Rob Swan, showcasing his resilience and skill.
Now let's dive into the intense battle between Andrew Malalu, Roger Hill, and Roger Duckworth. The stage times for these three drivers were neck and neck all day long. Roger Hill had a slight edge beating Andrew Malalu on every stage of the day, but only by the tiniest of margins, mostly within a second on each stage. The fierce rivalry between these veterans was on full display. In a dramatic moment on stage 16 at Dark Hole, Andrew clipped a curb, broke a wheel, and dragged his Ford Fiesta through the stage in true rally fashion with no mechanical sympathy. Hill eventually bested Malu by just 10 seconds, with Duckworth a further 18 seconds back. The close competition and relentless drive of these rally veterans made for a thrilling showdown. Next, we turn our attention to Logan Watson and Craig Yearwood, who played a smart game on the Sunday stages. And right three, maybe four. 25 press, left four and dip. 25, right five. And keep left at the barrier. Logan decided not to be forced into an all-out battle with the top runners. Instead, he chose a strategic approach, watching their moves while still acclimating to his new Skoda in ever-changing conditions. Logan consistently set stage times just outside the top 10 overall, avoiding any big risks. His calculated strategy paid off as he secured a solid 6 overall in the FIA R5 class. An impressive and strategic drive from Logan Watson, showcasing his adaptability. Now, let's revisit the epic battle between Josh Reed and Mark Maloney. Mark started the day with a slim three-second lead over Josh, and the competition was fierce. Mark managed to beat Josh on five stages by the narrowest of margins, ultimately securing a seven-second victory over Reed. Mark delivered an incredible stage performance going fastest overall on stage 15, and consistently placing in the top three on four of Sunday's stages, showcasing his true speed. Josh pushed his Fiesta to the absolute limit, most notably going third fastest overall through Dark Hole on SS16. His relentless drive earned him a fifth place finish in the FIA R5 class, with Mark finishing just ahead in P4, an electrifying duel between two talented drivers. conclude our coverage, let's dive into the battle for supremacy at BCIC Rally Barbados 2024. Kyle Gregg and Ori Hunt's story is nothing short of incredible. Rising from the ashes of a disastrous King of the Hill event, they came back with a car that wasn't 100% and finished on the podium. Kyle consistently posted top 5 times throughout the day, carefully managing his beaten up Ford Fiesta Rally 2 to a remarkable P3 finish. This is one of the best comeback stories we've ever witnessed at Rally Barbados. Now, the battle for the top step at this year's event, Stuart Maloney versus Jeffrey Panther. These two were locked in an incredible duel throughout the entire day. Jeff put immense pressure on Stuart on every stage, but Stuart rose to the occasion, driving a flawless day three. He beat Jeffrey on every stage except one, showcasing some of the best driving we've ever seen in competition. Mm -hmm. 
Stewart took his victory at Rally Barbados, finishing 14 seconds ahead of Panton. Both drivers were incredible competitors, with Jeff stating that Stewart drove a flawless event and never made a mistake. Stuart Maloney and Christian Yearwood are your 2024 BCIC Rally Barbados winners. Stuart dedicated this victory to his dear friend and mentor, Paul Bourne, who tragically passed away earlier this year. Stuart said Paul was with him every step of the way, making this victory even more special. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for these unforgettable moments at Rally Barbados 2024. Until next time, we'll see you on the road.